Hello everyone and welcome to another Halo 2 Anniversary Forge tutorial. My name is Xandral and today I am bringing you another scripting tutorial. This idea is called Puzzle Gates or End Gates and it is by Martian Mall Cop. Once again, uh, this guy's just taken over my channel because, well, there's no one else making, you know, these cool ideas and, you know, I, I'm, I'm completely out. So, uh, yeah, anyway, I'm bringing you his creation here. As you can see, this gate here has two control switches next to it and both of them will need to be activated in order for it to go down. Uh, you don't have to do this uh, in any order. You can hit the right one first and then the left one and it'll still go down. So, just to clear up any confusion, this isn't a tutorial on how to create a combination lock where you have to hit the switches in a certain order to make the gate go down so you know I'm sorry to disappoint you but yeah this idea is still pretty cool so keep watching if you're interested but if you are looking for a tutorial on how to make a combination lock I will leave a link in the description so feel free to check that out anyway moving forward here I'm demonstrating that you can have um, a lot of switches uh, to one gate so you're not set to just two or four and here's the last thing I'm gonna be teaching uh, this is the kind of uh, gate where you will need two people activating the switch at the exact same time or you know not at the exact same time necessarily but you know just a couple of seconds between each other and uh, that will cause the gate to go down and uh, this is actually not that hard so let's just get right into it as you can see there aren't you know a whole lot of switches here so just do as I do and you should be set if you want to know the logic behind the scripting I will also leave a link in to the description to the video of Martian Mall Cop where he describes this in more detail than I can anyway let's get started with the first gate this one you'll only need two switches to make the gate go down anyway let's get started as you can see I have two switch ons and two console switches and uh, I'm just gonna get started with the console switches anyway make sure to leave its advanced settings alone go to scripting spawn channel to negative one candy spawn to false power channel to negative one broadcast channel and timer slash user data to zero now moving on here to the second console switch uh, it's pretty much exactly the same except the broadcast channel is moved one uh, to one instead of zero but uh, spawn channel candy spawn and power channel are still at negative one so there's not a whole lot of complication there anyway let's move on to the switch on go to its scripting and make sure it's spawn channel is negative one candy spawn to false power channel to negative one broadcast channel and timer slash user data to zero so the console switch that it's like uh, connected to it should have the same scripting settings uh, as the console switch and the second switch on here should have the same scripting settings as its corresponding console switch broadcast channel to one timer data to zero and everything else should be uh, left to its default settings anyway here we have one timer on once go to its spawn channel make sure it's zero candy spawn to true power channel to one broadcast channel to two and timer slash user data to zero and make sure that its place at start is set to false uh, anyway let's move on to the last part in this uh, first gate uh, this is the garage make sure it's spawn channel to negative one candy spawn to false power channel to negative one broadcast channel to two and timer slash user data to zero uh, anyway that is the first uh, gate it's pretty simple to do anyway this is the second one and uh, it's very similar to the first one it's just that it has uh, twice more uh, console switches and you know just regular old switches Anyway, I'm just gonna go over all of them one at a time. Let's get started once again with the console switches. Anyway, this first console switch go to its scripting, spawn channel to negative one, candy spawn to false, power channel to negative one, broadcast channel to three, and timer slash user data to zero. Uh, for the next console switch, it should have pretty much the exact same settings, except the broadcast channel should be set to four. As you can see, power channel negative one, I just left it, and timer slash user data should still be zero. And if you move on here, once again, exact same settings, except for the broadcast channel, just move it one unit up, this time it's five, the next console switch should have six, and there you go. Anyway, like I said, these are all very simple to do, so you know, if I can do them, then certainly you can as well. Anyway, let's move on to the switches. Once again, make sure uh, the switches are just set to the same settings as the console switch, uh, you know, they're linked to. This one has the broadcast channel of three and everything else is left to its default. For the next switch here, broadcast channel is set to four, just like its console switch. Next switch here, once again, broadcast channel is set to five. And for the last one, obviously, you'll have to make sure its broadcast channel is set to 6, just like its console. And I also forgot to mention that you're not required to use the console switch. You can use the other one if you want. Anyway, let's move on. We have a timer on once here. Make sure its broadcast channel is set to 7, spawn channel set to 3, candy spawn to true, 
power channel set to 4 and the timer slash user data to 0. Also make sure that its place at start is set to false. Moving forward here we have another timer on ones, go to scripting, spawn, spawn channel to 5, candy spawn to true, power channel to 6, broadcast channel set that to 8, leave the timer and slash user data to 0, and make sure its place at start is set to false. Lastly we have another timer on once, make sure it's place at start is once again set to false, go to scripting and spawn channel, change it to 7, candy spawn should be changed to true, power channel to 8, broadcast channel to 9, and the timer slash user data to 0. And lastly we have the garage door, uh, leave its advanced settings alone, go to scripting, spawn channel should be set to negative 1, candy spawn should be left to false, power channel to negative 1, broadcast channel to 9, and timer slash user data to 0. And that is pretty much it for the second gate demo. Let's move on to the, the two person gate, you know the one that will require two people uh, activating it at the same time in order to make it go down. And this one actually has fewer switches and all of that gizmo so that should make this one easier. Anyway, for the first console switch, change its uh, scripting, go to spawn channel, change it to negative 1, can despawn to false, power channel to negative 1, broadcast channel to 10, and the timer slash user data to 0. For the next console switch, you'll pretty much retain the same settings, except the broadcast channel should be set to 11. Anyway, moving on here with the two switch ons for the first one, uh, once again, just like the other ones, just make sure its scripting settings is set to the same ones as the console switch that it's linked to. As you can see, they both have the broadcast channel of 10. For the next switch on, th you will see that this one has a broadcast channel to 11. Now you may have observed that the, most of the scripting to these gates are actually not all that complicated. Uh, you only have to change like one broadcast channel and you should be set and uh, that just makes it easier for us non scripting geniuses anyway let's just move on timer off here make sure its spawn channel is set to negative one can despawn to false power channel and broadcast channel should both be 10 and the timer slash user data should be set to 5 now this timer user data setting this is the setting that determines how long it will be before the switch resets and that's why you actually need two people to be activating this one. Uh, let's say one person tries to do it all by himself. If it takes him more than five seconds to activate the second switch after the first one, it wouldn't work out because the first switch will have then been reset and that's why you need two people. And uh, the way this would work in puzzle maps or infection maps is that you can have these switches uh, in separate distances from each other so that the players have to separate themselves and coordinate with each other and you know activate the switches at the same time in order to proceed. So I guess technically it's not always a two person switch. I mean one person I guess can do it. It just depends on the setting of the timer slash user data. If it's set to a time long enough for the, for the person to get to the second switch before the first one deactivates then he can get the garage door down. Anyway that's all there is to that. Let's just move on here. For the second timer off make sure it just has the exact same settings as the first one except that the power channel and the broadcast channel should both be set to 11. Anyway, let's move on. Here we have the timer on once. Change its spawn channel and make it 10. Candy spawn set it to true. Power channel set it to 11. Broadcast channel to 12. And timer slash user data to 0. And make sure to change its advanced settings. Go to place at start and set that to false. Also forgot to mention that you don't have to touch the advanced settings of the two timer offs earlier. Anyway, let's move on to the last piece here. We have the garage door. Set its spawn channel to negative 1. Can despawn to false. Power channel to negative 1. Broadcast channel to 12. And timer slash user data to 0. And that is pretty much it for this Forge tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed or found this useful in any way. Uh, I really think this would be a really cool feature to implement in puzzle maps or infection maps. And the best thing is it's not that hard to do. Anyway, uh, I'll just see you guys next time. I have a map feature ready to be uploaded. Uh, I'll just, I think I'll upload it tomorrow actually. And yeah, I'll just see you guys next time. Goodbye.